Good morning, I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Tuesday. Number one, more than one million Americans are under evacuation orders as Hurricane Dorian slowly approaches the U.S. coastline. The storm has been hovering over the Bahamas with sustained winds well over 100 miles an hour. Strong winds are already being felt in Florida ahead of its expected arrival off the coast late today. It will then move north, passing near the Georgia and South Carolina coastlines tomorrow night and near North Carolina late Thursday. The hurricane is blamed for at least five deaths in the Bahamas. Some residents, like these folks, had to swim to safety. There are reports of floodwaters reaching 20 feet high. An estimated 13,000 homes have been destroyed. The damage is being compared to a war zone, and the death toll is expected to rise. Number two now, the boat fire tragedy off the coast of Southern California. 34 people are feared dead. Overnight, authorities announced they've found 25 bodies, but the search continues for the nine others missing. It's still unclear what caused the fire on that dive boat. At least three groups of people had booked the excursion to celebrate birthdays. On to number three, the new details about the gunman who went on a rampage in West Texas over the weekend. ABC News has learned the Odessa gunman failed a federal background gun check because he had been clinically diagnosed as being mentally ill. Authorities say shortly before 36-year-old Seth Latour began his rampage, he was fired from his trucking job. He and his employer then both dialed 911. The suspect also called the FBI tip line before the gunfire erupted, but the FBI says it was an incoherent call and he did not make any threats. Number four now, the Trump administration is apparently changing course after ending a program that allowed seriously ill immigrants to avoid deportation while they get medical treatment. Those immigrants were told last month that they had 33 days to leave the country. The announcement was met with a backlash from immigration activists. Officials now say they will resume processing applications that are pending. And finally, number five, you can now stay in the same beach house where MTV's Jersey Shore was filmed. It's now available to rent on booking.com it is six bedrooms but only one bathroom it'll cost you about three thousand dollars a night depending on when you rent it jim tan laundry for free all right let's get right to the big story the race to dodge dorian as the hurricane inches closer to the u.s mainland evacuations have been ordered along the coast from florida to north carolina right now the category three hurricane is still slamming the bahamas where it's been stalled for more than 24 hours the latest track shows the hurricane hugging the u.s coastline through the end of this week states of emergency have now been declared as far north as virginia even with the storm's eye offshore hurricane conditions are possible along florida's east coast beginning this afternoon when gusts in the 50s are possible in West Palm Beach and Barrow Beach, some areas could see more than a foot of rain and seven feet of storm surge. In the meantime, the hurricane is blamed for at least five deaths in the Bahamas, where the damage is being compared to a war zone. This morning, Hurricane Dorian unleashing its fury, pummeling the Bahamas for more than 24 hours straight. On Grand Bahama Island, new video of utter devastation and the life-threatening storm surge. That's the water hitting my front front room window, which is extremely high. Water is seen lapping the windows of this home. The homeowner says the water reached his kitchen windows 20 feet off the ground. This woman nervously watched as floodwaters reached the second story of her home. To the left, you can see the flooded stairs leading to the first floor. In this video, the Grand Bahama International Airport submerged under five feet of water. Rescuers receiving thousands of distress calls. This local man is driving a tractor through floodwaters, searching for people who need help. Swim! 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 The fast-moving water swept this group away right in front of ABC's Marcus Moore and his team. We heard those screams and looked off in the distance and saw four people at a house that was surrounded by the storm surge, the water rushing by. They swam across and made it, and they are thankful to be alive, and it really was a race against time. The U.S. Coast Guard is evacuating residents from hard-hit Abaco Island, where Chris Pannerman rode out the storm with his wife and three-year-old daughter. This is a, a life-changing storm. Um, it feels like something out of a movie. Pannerman says the storm ripped part of the roof off his home, and he saw one house that was flipped over. When we were trapped in the bathroom, it, the whole building was shaking. I was sitting against the wall, and I can feel the pressure entering 
and pushing the wall on my back. The Salvation Army estimates up to 13,000 homes in the Bahamas have been destroyed. Reporter Janice Fernandez with our Miami station describing the apocalyptic damage. We look like a bomb went off here and it looks like a war zone. As of Monday night, at least five deaths are blamed on the storm, including this woman's grandson. Then my granddaughter called my daughter from Abaco and said, my daughter said, my son, my grandson dead. Did they say how, how he died? I think they say he's wrong. <laughs> And this morning, Hurricane Hunter Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Ragusa telling ABC News Dorian is unlike any storm he's ever seen. Hurricanes are given names because they all have different personalities and uh, they're, they're different creatures. Hurricane Dorian was, was its own hurricane and, and decided uh, it did not want to react like all the other ones. The Prime Minister of the Bahamas said the hurricane is like fighting a war but being completely helpless to fight. The United States is already sending humanitarian assistance, beginning with a disaster response team from U.S. aid. Well, relief workers describe the situation in the Bahamas as dire. The deadly storm has leveled homes, businesses, and knocked out power to thousands. People in the U.S. and around the globe are already working to help those in need by providing food, clothes, and other necessities. As communities along the Florida coast keep an eye on Hurricane Dorian, even the Sunshine State is coming together to help the Bahamas. The city of Miami has established 16 drop-off locations at fire stations and churches for anyone in the area to drop off supplies like canned food, baby formula, and water. For those not in the Miami area, consider donating blood at a local blood bank. There's an increased need for O-negative and O-positive blood, as well as platelets, and several organizations can benefit from monetary donations. World Central Kitchen is on the ground in the Bahamas and has already prepped 10,000 sandwiches to help feed those affected by Dorian. Soul Relief is made up of private pilots set to bring supplies and evacuate survivors from the Bahamas as soon as it's safe to do so. The American Red Cross, the Salvation Army and Catholic Charities are welcoming donations as well. More than one million people are now under evacuation orders from Florida to the Carolinas. Everyone along the coast is being warned, even if Hurricane Dorian doesn't make landfall in the U.S., it could still be extremely dangerous and destructive, dumping more than a foot of rain in some areas. And we're already seeing flooding on the streets of Miami, like you see right there. ABC Serena Marshall continues our coverage. She is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Serena, good morning. Kenneth Janae, good morning to both of you. The Florida National Guard has already activated 4,500 troops to respond to this storm and the American Red Cross setting up 60 shelters just in Florida alone. This morning, Hurricane Dorian threatening nearly 1,000 miles of American coastline. If you're in a, in a mandatory, you, have, you just have to get out. With the storm looming about 100 miles offshore, 1.2 million people have been ordered to evacuate from Florida, all the way to the outer banks of North Carolina. Mandatory evacuation is now in place. Please collect your belongings, vacate, and seek shelter. Police going door to door in Boynton Beach, Florida, where patients at hospitals are being moved inland. Despite the warnings, not all have evacuated. This man venturing out to test the waters in Palm Beach, getting wiped out by the massive waves. It looks like he's going to be all right, though. But many have deserted the area, fleeing their homes and businesses. So right now you're just watching and waiting. Like everybody else in Volusia County. In South Carolina, all lanes of this highway now lead away from the coast. Many people in Charleston are bracing for severe flooding. Our Steve Osinsomni is there. So many families here deciding that they're going to stay put. They're getting their sandbags ready to keep the water out. And in Georgia, where 400,000 people are under evacuation orders, the governor is warning them don't take any chances. Even with all this preparation, we still cannot stress enough that Hurricane Dorian remains a significant threat. Flooding remains a big concern. Forecasters are predicting some areas can get up to 15 inches of rain with the storm surge reaching seven feet. Kenneth Janae. There. Um, Serena, before you go, we do know that you grew up in that area of Volusia County. Uh, I'm curious about when it comes to Florida's history. We always, we always say Floridians, they know what to do during these types of events in tropical systems. So when you see the evacuations, people are heeding those warnings. How does that compare to how you grew up and what you know about that area? 
Uh, Kenneth, I grew up about 30 minutes north of here, right outside of Daytona Beach. And when you look back when I was growing up here, we'd see hurricanes come up the coast and we would often ignore those warnings from officials and setting instead choosing to ride them out. This storm feels different. We've all heard of the Waffle House test. I have a best friend test. When this family decides to evacuate, then I know people in this area are taking it seriously. They alone have multiple generators and a water pump for flooding and they have chosen to go inward with this storm. They're seeing the damage and the devastation coming out of the Bahamas. They recognize that just a slight deviation means this storm will come up the coast and it will be destructive. So they are heeding these warnings. We're seeing the towns that sit along the beachside really ghost towns. So it does feel different here in Florida than it did in years past. Wow, Serena, that is very useful information. I know you were out there doing a lot of live shots for the stations around the country. I hope you're sharing that with that with them too, because that is really good insight having grown up there. Thanks, guys. And meanwhile, Serena, you be safe too, as well as your family. Thank you, Serena. We appreciate that. Waffle House <laughs> test you. is a real yeah. thing. And as she said, a best friend test and yeah. family test. That's also important information there. And some other stories we're watching this morning, a crippling fuel shortage is sparking protests in Haiti. Gas stations have been on empty for days. That's making it difficult for Haitians to get to work, run errands, and take their kids to school. The fuel crisis is pushing the country's economy toward a recession. Protesters are also demanding that the president resign. Now to dramatic police body cam video as two officers in eastern Texas rescue a truck driver. Look, you'll see the band's big rig had dropped 40 feet off a ramp onto the road below. The officers pulled the driver to safety as part of the truck was burning. They had no idea if it was about to explode. The driver's recovering from a few broken bones. That truck was carrying orange juice. And a terrifying flight for a student pilot who was forced to take the controls and land the plane on his own. Max Sylvester was on a training flight in Australia when his instructor passed out after a possible seizure. Sylvester alerted air traffic control and the controller asked an important question. Have you landed um, uh, any aircraft before? No, I haven't. This is my first um, lesson. Yeah, it was his first lesson in that type of plane, but the air traffic controller was able to guide him through the flight. And after 50 minutes in the air, Sylvester nailed the landing with his anxious wife watching it all from the ground. Max says, despite the ordeal, he won't hesitate to get back in the air. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, you have to do that because, I mean, you, you've got to show your kids that, you know, having issues like this, you know, you've got to power through them. He said he has to set a good example for his three, his kids. He's got three of them. The flight instructor now recovering in the hospital. So scary. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up, the confrontation over Brexit between Parliament and the new Prime Minister. And the maid of honor taking the casual dress code literally after this. We turn out to the breaking news off the coast of California. More than two dozen bodies have been recovered after that boat inferno near Santa Cruz Island. 34 people are feared dead, but overnight there was still a glimmer of hope that more survivors can be found. This morning, the round-the-clock search for any survivors of a floating inferno. We will search uh, all the way through the night into the morning, but I think we all should be prepared um, to move into um, the, the worst outcome. The dive boat with 39 people aboard anchored yards from shore erupted in flames just after 3 a.m. Monday. Billy, Billy, Billy. I can't Five crew members escaped by jumping into the water, but dozens of sleeping passengers were trapped inside the burning boat. Roger, are they locked inside the boat? Roger, can you get back on board and unlock the boat, uh, lock, unlock the doors so they can get off? Fire boats arrived at remote Santa Cruz Island, but the conception was too far gone. We're not going to make an attempt with our uh, pump to put it out. The main uh, objective is to look for victims. Overnight, we learned 25 bodies have been found, most near the sunken wreckage. Nine are still missing. ABC's Will Carr on the scene. This is rough, rugged terrain. The hope is that maybe somebody made it onto the island where they could continue to be rescued. On shore, one of the crew members in obvious pain. <laughs> and family members arriving not knowing if their loved ones were alive or dead. The owners of a nearby rescue boat said the Conception's crew did everything they could. The young man was sitting there across from me and he was crying. And he, he said that they had celebrated three birthdays. 
What caused this incident is still a mystery. Images from before the fire show just how tight the space was in the passenger's bunk room. Of all scenarios, to be in a remote location, have a fire that occurs, you, you couldn't ask for a worse situation. The boat sank in 64 feet of water. At least three groups on board were together to celebrate birthdays. Now to Afghanistan, where an official says at least 16 people have been killed and more than 100 are injured after a Taliban suicide attack on an international compound in Kabul. The attack came just hours after the U.S. reached an agreement with the Taliban to pull about 5,000 troops out of the country. Let's go across the pond to Jennifer Eccleston in the London Bureau for more. Jennifer, good morning. Good morning, Janae and Kenneth. Yeah, the Taliban claiming responsibility for that huge blast in Kabul, which killed, as you said, 16 people, injuring more than 100. The militant group calling it a response to earlier raids by American and Afghan forces on civilians in other parts of the country. This deadly attack is unfolding just hours after the American envoy for talks with the Taliban claimed the U.S. was at a threshold of a deal to end America's longest war. In a local TV interview in Afghanistan, Zalme Khalilzad said he presented a preliminary troop reduction plan to the Afghan government. Under the deal, 5,000 of the roughly 14,000 American troops would withdraw within 135 days. The agreement is subject to President Trump's approval, of course, and it isn't a peace deal or a political deal between the Taliban and the Kabul government. It is a means to hopefully reduce the violence that stems from the presence of U.S. troops there. And in the latest Brexit chapter, we understand that back there in England, the new Prime Minister Boris Johnson is facing a confrontation with Parliament over the Halloween Brexit deadline. Some lawmakers are pushing for a delay, but Johnson's not budging. Yeah, and there seems to be a bit of a civil war going on within his party, and it's uh, on the day that is back to work for U.K. politicians, if only for a few days. That's because new Prime Minister Boris Johnson enacted an additional government recess to begin sometime next week. That move reduces the number of days lawmakers have to debate the terms of Britain's divorce from Europe, otherwise known as Brexit which is set to, to take place in Halloween, as, as you mentioned. Now, fewer debate days means less time to find a common ground agreement to avoid a no-deal crash-out of the EU. Anti-Brexiteers and those who want a managed separation are screaming mad calling it undemocratic. Thousands took to the street across Britain at the weekend to vent their anger, and they are promising to do so again this week. All right, and of course, we have to check in on the new royal parents. They're preparing to take a trip to South Africa. We knew about this even while the Duchess was still pregnant. Tell us how they're getting ready, Jennifer. Uh, Prince Harry took to his family's official Instagram account to get fans psyched about that upcoming trip to Africa with baby Archie. Uh, Harry writes that he's excited for the chance to introduce his wife and son to a part of the world that means so much to him. And he also revealed the family will visit South Africa together and that Harry will also be visiting Malawi, Angola and Botswana during the trip. And just a bit more royal news, if you could stand it. The Sussexes are expected to visit the Queen and Prince Philip in Scotland sometime this week. That's according to media outlets here. It would be Meghan's first trip to the sprawling Balmoral Castle, which is beloved by the Queen and where the royal family enjoy hunting, fly fishing and a bit of grouse shooting. It's unclear if the Duchess will embrace such traditional experiences. Well, I think it'll be Arthur's first trip to Scotland as well, so, and Arthur? to South Africa. Yeah. Archie? Baby. Is it Ar Oh, is that what it's short for? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Arthur? <laughs> Archie. It's just Archie. Okay, thank you, because I started oh, really doubting myself for wait. a second. So, oh, that's right, it is, but I, I have to do a little bit more formal. Oh, that's what you're doing? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I, you hey, know, sometimes yeah. I say Meg, Megan, Duchess, you know. Jennifer, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. But wait a second. Let's get this clear. Okay. Archie is not short for Arthur. Or it is? It is, but they just call him Archie. That's Ma confirmed. Mountbatten. Yeah, That's that is confirmed. Okay. Yeah. But well, I think it should be Arthur, but it's not my baby. Let's get a check of our notifications. Starting with two adorable new panda babies. Uh, I wonder what their names are. Born at the Berlin Zoo. <laughs> I was so caught off guard. I know. Me too. Uh, pre <laughs> <laughs> Very precious little baby They're pandas. They're so cute, Oh, yes. and so tiny. They're, apparently, baby pandas are a stick of a, like the size <laughs> of a stick of butter when they're born. Yeah. Uh, next to a maid of honor at a wedding whose sister said, wear whatever you want. So 
she did. She came as a T-Rex there, there tiny go. arms, walk her down Ready the aisle. Ready to celebrate love. Watch this baby attack its grandma with love. Lots of love. Lots of kisses coming up here. There it is. Yeah, oh, so, so cute. Sweet. I love it so Aww. much. Adorable, that baby kissing on grandma. All the smooches. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and hey, you know what? What? Halloween. Speaking is that of that T-Rex there. Is that there, your favorite holiday? I'm going to dress up as Arthur. Oh, no, I've already done that. Baby Archie. You have already <laughs> done that. Did not go that. over well. that's enough. Did not go over well. The Halloween season isn't far away, which means you might find yourself watching a scary movie. But do you ever wonder what that does to your body? Well, if you do, if you have, the Mayo Clinic says getting scared while watching a horror movie triggers a fight or flight type response. That means your heart rate increases, your blood flows faster to your muscles, and your adrenaline spikes. The same things happen when you're exercising. But doctors say that doesn't mean you should quit your workouts and become a couch potato watching horror flicks. That advice comes from a medical professional. There you go. So that's our question <laughs> of the day. What scary movie got your adrenaline pumping? Candyman. I hated that one growing up. All the Halloween. One, two, three, four, five. And I loved that one. Jamie Lee Curtis, though, she is bad ass. Yep. Hey, tell can us. Can you say that? It's digital. Oh. ABC News Live. I can say that. Tell us in the comments. Let's list all the words I can, I can say that. Uh, 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 okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm so caught off guard today. Tell us in the comments or tweet us at ABC News Live. And remember, Airbud. Check out yeah. this dog playing some serious defense. Oh. Wait for it. Oh. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. definitely yeah. Airbud right him, there. Oh, don't push the dog. <laughs> uh, and we're getting our first look this morning at nearly two dozen elite athletes who will be gracing the pages of ESPN's 2019 body issue. Including this amazing snap. Look at that. Of Team USA track and field Paralympians, Scout Bassett, as she embraces and shares her story of scars and survival. Here's ABC's Paula Ferris. ESPN Magazine's annual salute to outstanding athletes photographed these athletes revealing their powerful bodies in a way you've never seen before. Unclothed, the body issue athletes were celebrated and singled out by the magazine for their achievements in sport on the three alternating covers. Super Bowl victors, the Eagles offensive line, all five of them having fun on the photo shoot. And gymnast Caitlin Ohashi, known for her perfection. Remember her perfect 10 at UCLA that went viral? Well, here she is, perfectly suspended from the ceiling for her cover photo. And then there's U.S. women's soccer player Kelly O'Hara, seen here popping bottles, still cherishing that World Cup championship. This year's issue hits newsstands Friday, and after 21 years, this will be the final year that they'll publish in print. This year's body issue features 21 athletes from the worlds of basketball, baseball, soccer, surfing, UFC, and of course, oh. the NFL, all sports that I'm great at. But we just can't get enough of the Super Bowl champions, the Philadelphia E-A-G-L-E-S wow. Eagles. That is quite a photo Do not drop there. those letters. Yeah. Hey, well, coming up, we'll have a, everything you need to watch out for happening today. And the heartwarming story behind this viral video. This is a good one. That's coming up after this. Here's what to watch out for today. Dorian is expected to be a Category 3 hurricane as it approaches Florida near West Palm Beach and then move up the coast, brushing Georgia and then the Carolinas. And even though Dorian is still about 100 miles from Florida, residents are already seeing the effects of tropical storm force winds. The real estate tycoon at the center of the HBO documentary, The Jinx, is expected to go on trial today for murder after years of delays. 76-year-old Robert Durst is accused of killing his longtime confidant, Susan Berman, at her Beverly Hills home nearly 20 years ago. Durst was arrested in 2015 after he appeared to confess in the documentary. And the Boston Globe reports 36 people were arrested Saturday during Boston's Straight Pride Parade. If they're scheduled to be arraigned at Boston Municipal Court Tuesday, though prosecutors say it's unclear whether all would appear. Plus, don't forget to tune into the debrief for an update on all our top stories in the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. And so this morning, we will leave you with this. A woman who says her dog saves her life every day. Marley is an autism service dog. He's trained to react to signs of anxiety, like when his owner, Haley, starts getting upset. That's when Marley jumps into Haley's arms and forces her to cuddle. She says the dog won't stop trying to get into her arms until she's calmer. 
and no longer a threat to herself. Very, very, very sweet. Yeah, service right animals are so important. Yeah, and, uh, they make a huge difference. They really do. Well, that is it for us. Be safe out there. Prepare if you are, yes. you know, anywhere along the southeastern coast. Obviously, the next 24 hours is very crucial when it comes to watching Dorian in the U.S. mainland, so please stay with us. ABC News and all of our apps, platforms, continue watching ABC News Live. Thank we'll you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.